Hello again adventurers, welcome to the exciting video from Albania and today we're gonna be exploring the Roman ruins at the Butrint National Park. Let's get into the vlog! The Great Basilica, Butrin from the 5th century had a bishop and Great Basilica was the bishop's church. It was constructed in the early 6th century AD at the same time as the baptistry. The original basilica would have had three aisles separated by colonnades of columns and capitals reused from earlier buildings, some of these can still be seen inside. The floor was paved with a mosaic, which was created by the same craftsman who made the baptistry mosaic and there was a polygonal apse. In the medieval period, the basilica was substantially rebuilt with stone piers and a new semicircular apse. A flagstone floor was placed over the mosaic pavement. So when you come to Butrin site, which is a small half island, you'll notice it's pretty foresty. There's a lot of big trees. This is how Albania should look like without deforestation. So it's pretty sad that this is like a last refugee of forest and it's pretty small. But when you look around everywhere, it's all deforested. Early fortifications. The spectacular circuit wall of Butrin dates back to the 4th century BC and is a fine example of the engineering skills of this period. The wall was constructed without mortar using large blocks that fit closely together. So it's incredible how they're able to carve this huge block of rocks and fit them together to make this gate over 2000 years ago. Even now to make something like this uh, would be a great achievement. You would need some heavy tools and machinery to carve these rocks and to place them on top of each other as they are quite heavy. So I'm not really sure how they did it but it's incredible. Lion Gate. The so-called Lion Gate takes its name from the relief depicting a lion devouring the head of a bull positioned above the entrance. The lion relief was not part of the original wall but was placed here in the 5th century AD in order to reduce the size of the gate and make it easier to defend. The relief is from a temple building and may date from as early as the 6th century BC.
As you pass through the gate you will see a spring witch during Roman times which was associated with the cult of nymphs. An inscription in front of the well records that a citizen of Butrint, Judia Rufina, paid for its refurbishment in the 2nd century AD. So here we got to the second outer walls that go all the way down to the lagoon. It's incredible how they're preserved until today. Alright and here we walked up to this uh, castle that was reconstructed in the uh, early 20th century and it should also include a museum. Alright and now we got inside the museum and now I understand why the price is uh, 700 legs which is around 6 euros because you get to see all these artifacts from here which people used during the Roman Empire times over 2000 years ago, so it's kind of fascinating. And you also get to see these statues that they found in this site. Caesar's legacy. Shortly before his death in 44 BC, Julius Caesar founded a Roman colony of Butrint which was further developed under the reign of Augustus. For a brief period, the people who shaped the future of the Roman world took a personal interest in the town. Their presence and influence is shown in the statues and inscriptions found in the heart of the city. Much of what we know of Butrin's history in this period comes from the letters of Cicero, the famous Roman politician and orator. Here you can see some of the bigger statues that were excavated in the Butrin site. So it's incredible how well they're preserved considering they're pretty much laying in the ground for 2000 years. It's also astonishing how generations after Romans didn't care about the statues and artifacts. And here we wanted to walk up to the tower of the castle, but the door was locked. So I'm not sure if it's locked just during this off season or during the whole year. Theater. The Italian archaeologist Luigi Maria Ugoli discovered the theater in 1928 to 1930. Ugolini's greatest discovery was a line of statues, including the famous goddess of Butrint in front of the stage building. The first theater followed the Greek style and would have been used by worshippers and the priests of the sanctuary for religious ceremonies and public discussions. A late 4th century before Christ's inscription, located on the seating banks in the theater, tells us the theater construction was funded by donation to the sanctuary. On the surrounding walls you can see numerous manumission inscriptions that record the freeing of slaves in honor of the god Asclepius.
it was very fascinating to visit these facilities that people were using over 2000 years ago and they are even more sophisticated than people who live after in the medieval ages. The larger than life-size early imperial statues discovered in the theater, which can be seen in the museum, include Augustus, his wife Livia and his successful general Agrippa. The Roman colony. Caesar arrived at Butrin in 44 BC and recognized its potential as a town. After his bitter struggle with Pompey, he designated Butrin a Roman colonial city. Augustus, Caesar's adopted son, further developed the colony after defeating Antony and Cleopatra at nearby Actium in 31 BC. Just before the darkness, we arrived to the baptistry of Butrint, where you can see these uh, pillars sticking out of the ground. And there should have been also a mosaic, like on the picture here, but there was nothing like that here. So I'm not sure if they remove it for the rain season or what, but we haven't seen any mosaic here. Guys, I hope you enjoy another vlog from Albania. This one was more informative and historical. And if you enjoy these kind of things, I definitely recommend going to Butrint. There is a lot of to explore. I would recommend at least three hours to come here and definitely come during the off season because you will have all place to yourself. So for now, stay tuned for future videos. And as always, stay healthy and stay adventurous.